Welcome back, everybody, to another installment of Nain Shorts here in the Dungeon of Physique Magnifique, wielding my kitchen knife. <laughs> it's not a kitchen knife, but it, it it's one of my favorite knives. I, I carry it with me, probably more than I should. But um, lately, I've been really, really thinking about the significance of a weapon like this, or or a sword, or a knife, even to some extent, a gun. I've really been pondering the idea of violence and, and what that means in the martial arts world and how it's shaped the martial arts over the years. Um, you know, sadly, violence has been a part of human existence since the first civilization, since before we had civilizations. There's so much to be said about how ingrained it is in human life. and how it's affected the martial arts in the sense of somebody survived a war or somebody wanted to get more warriors quicker so they taught certain things. They um, had schools where people would be trained as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible so they can go out there and kill more efficiently. And then of course that's war, right? The martial part of martial arts, that's Part of our history it's deep rooted I'm sure every martial arts if you dig deep enough into their history they will eventually reach some far off past battlefield and that's where it was born from but of course times change we can't be at war all the time even though some people might argue we are but there are moments of peace where the martial part of it isn't as important anymore and Frankly, you can't go around teaching people how to decapitate and, and slice people up. So there's a shift. All of a sudden, we start incorporating into these practices the art, the pageantry, the cultural aspect of it. So much to the point where there are martial arts alive today that are representative of an entire culture of people. And when you study it, you learn about the history, you learn about the culture, you learn about the habits and the things that led to the creation of this art that were incorporated after the martial part. But violence doesn't just exist in the field of war. I mean, you, you see it everywhere. There, there's local skirmishes. There's, uh, in the past, between tribes, uh, between resources, that sort of thing. But even as locally as domestic violence, violence at school. And I've really been debating this with a lot of different people in reference to a very simple question. Are we experiencing more violence today in this day and age than we were in the past? And some of my fellow martial artists often respond with the very same thing. Um, no, not really. It's still the same amount of violence. It's just that because of connectivity, we see it more. It's in our faces more. And, and there's an anthropological reason why our lizard brains are so adept to looking at violent things or looking for danger or, or that sort of thing because the ones that survived were the ones that were scared enough to do something about it. The ones that quickly were on guard when they saw something strange, or even the cowardly that once they were scared, they ran back to somewhere that was safe. We are descendant of those people because the ones that weren't, they're the ones that got eaten by a saber-toothed tiger or some other large creature. So it's in our brains to look for that stuff. So it's easy to say that, yeah, we, we kind of seek it out. And some of us seek it out so much that we train. But it's boiled down to a point where we train very hard every single day in hopes to not use it. That we have it if we need it, but we hope never to need it. Uh, at least that's the mentality in which I train. And I've met many people who have very similar mentality and teach it in their art and teach it in their curriculum to have that sense of respect for life. And I think that has to do with the fact that many of them were born from war and those who do survive war and are, are still fit mentally oftentimes choose peaceful things. They rather not fight, they rather not kill. 
they want that peace. They fought for the sake of the peace of everyone else. So I think that's where that respect in the martial arts really is born from, from the idea that we don't want to harm other people, but we're willing to if we have to defend ourselves or somebody that we love. But that's why violence is so easily viewed, so easily looked at and catches our eyes so quickly is because it's ingrained in us to some degree. And, and whether how true that is, I, I don't know. I'd have to do a bit more research and I'm sure there are those out there who know a lot more than I do and could give me even some insight as to why that is so prevalent in the human existence, the human life. But back to the original question of is violent more apparent now or is it just seen more often than it was before because of technology? And I don't know, some people say that no, it's, there's less violence than there was before. Some people argue that there's more violence. Personally, I'm on the side that no, it's the same amount of violence, but I think the violence has become more deadly. I think it's become to the point where there are more deaths in these violent uh, interactions between people than there used to be. There was a time, and probably because of the way martial arts was once taught, that there was respect even amongst enemies, where you would fight and you would lose or you would win, but it would end that conflict. Sure, there was other conflicts that rose later on, but there was a sense of respect that came along with having to fight somebody. And, and maybe we've lost some of that as a society, as, as a people. We don't have it as, as openly as we once did. You hear all these crazy stories about people getting upset about children going as far as murdering their own parents because they didn't get something that they wanted. I mean, is the world really that much crazier? And an even more important question, for those of you that train, for those of us that train and train in the combative, does our training reflect the kind of violence that we're more likely to face, even in our neighborhood? Now, I literally mean our neighborhood, because just a week ago, on a Friday night, I took my two children to the mall. We went to buy a birthday present for the following day. And it, as it turns out, one of my cousins was at the same mall that same time and never ran into each other. And as the conversation progressed on the Saturday after, it was noted by another family member that there was a stabbing at that very same mall, a few hundred feet from where we were. that very same night. Now, I don't know whether that stabbing was between people that knew each other. I don't know if it was random. I didn't look much into it. All I know is that there was a violent act that happened near me. And it got me thinking, am I really prepared for something like that? Is my training enough to get me through if I had been the victim? And I have come across martial artists who do situational training for a more realistic approach to the training. Because it's needed. Because it, it really is. And you see it as a flow. You, you have the combative and then there's peace and you can't be as combative anymore. So it kind of gets watered down and it becomes more artistic. And then all of a sudden there's a group of people that realize this isn't working for the violence that I'm facing. So we need to change something. We need to add something. We need to think of it differently. And it becomes combative again. And it just kind of goes in that circle and I find myself in that place right now where I have to assess whether or not the combative aspect of what I'm learning, of what I'm teaching, is sufficient for the violence that I'm going to face. We had a conversation on Kali Conversations with Dr. Tim Hartman and he brought out an axe handle. And I was like, well, what the hell is that? He was like, it's an axe handle. I was like, well, I, I got that. Where's the axe part? He was like, well, it would be illegal for somebody to walk around with the full axe, but the axe handle, not a lot of people bat an eye, and it's more readily available and seen where he lives. Axe handles and bats. If somebody's going to attack you with a blunt weapon, it's most likely going to be one of those, he said. And they're going to attack you in one of two ways, whether it's double-handed or single-handed. 
So his teachings reflect that, reflect that type of attack, reflect that kind of encounter out in the streets. GM Bob Gomez. And this is one of the reasons why I'm starting to think about this is because of GM Bob. He has the young ladies in his school go through a kidnapping scenario. They have to do enough damage to get away from two assailants trying to grab them and take them to a secondary location. Now, why is that? Well, that's because young people, teens, and women are in that category of victims. They're what people look for to take and to abduct and to do other horrible things to. So it makes sense that their curriculum would reflect that, that they would have to go through something like that in order to feel comfortable enough to use the things that they've been training for, that they've been training with, to be able to use them in a real situation because that, sadly, is a reality. And there are other martial artists that we've come across that have similar ideas, that they do teach these things. Now, unfortunately, the way the world is, it's a bit harder to get away with some of the more contact-oriented ways of training. And I'm not trying to start a debate, but how can we bridge that gap? So we are giving our students and ourselves a better percentage in surviving these violent attacks. For me, around here, you fortunately do have knife attacks, as I learned a couple weeks ago. You do have fist fights. You do have people getting shot. These are real things that have happened to real people, people that I've known, people that I grew up with. So I need to really consider how much of what I'm doing, how much of what I'm teaching is going to reflect that degree of violence. Because if I claim to teach something that's combative and useful, then I feel like there has to be that element involved in it that reflects the violence in my environment. So I leave that to you. Does your training, does your teachings reflect that? Because as cool as learning how to wield a sword is, the likelihood of you having a sword fight out in the street is pretty minimal. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because I, there's some sword forms that I would love to learn and I will eventually because I'm not going to stop my training anytime soon. But I'll probably have to deal with something like this or something like this far more readily than I would a sword fight or even a stick fight. But defending this, that'll probably be more realistic. And hopefully, as is most, or at least proper martial arts training, I never will have to. But I would at least like to have some realistic training involved that gets me a little bit more prepared than the average person should I encounter it. Because sadly, it's out there. So, Whatever ways you train, please share. I would love to hear the sort of things that your schools or you personally train that you feel is necessary for the environment or let's say the violence that exists within your environment. Thank you for joining me on another one of Naeem's shorts, uh, something to ponder about. Uh, like and subscribe as always. Please share with other people if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to share them. Uh, all our contacts are there. You can leave them on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Um, any which way you want, please let us know. If there's anything you'd like to discuss or want to hear about, I'd love, I'd love to get that. Somebody asked me a question one time uh, to one of my videos, uh, when does a student become a teacher? And, and then that, <laughs> that was a tough question because I don't have the answer to that simply because I believe that everyone has their own opinion and journey in reference to it. Uh, I will say that the way I was taught, any student that has enough of an understanding on a subject matter to relay it to another student, not repeat it, but really explain to the best of their ability so that student understands it, 
that person can teach. Maybe just that one lesson for that person can teach. And I guess the simplest of those answers would be anyone who teaches on a regular basis is technically now a teacher. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're separated from one or the other. Because as a teacher, you're also learning. So you're constantly be being a better student by becoming a better teacher, if that makes any sense. So thank you again for joining me on I In Shorts. Until the next one, as usual, three, two, one, cut! <laughs>